Hello everyone and welcome to another beer review. Now we're doing another donation by Adrian. Now if you don't know Adrian's a, a viewer and a friend of mine and he likes to donate beers. I don't know whether he's ever tasted these beers that he actually donates to me. He, he, he may be thinking, tasted this, that's a lot of crap. Still got a couple of them left. I'll file them off to Graham and see what he thinks. That type of scenario. Or maybe I'm being unkind, which does happen on the odd occasion. Uh, maybe he just thinks, well, I'll tell you what. There's a nice beer. I'll buy a couple of beers for Graham and get to review them and, and see if like, just to kind of help him out. So he may be doing it from the goodness of his heart, or he's maybe doing it from the blackness of his heart. And, uh, he tastes like crap. You get what you do. <laughs> Whatever he's doing, it is actually appreciated because some of the beers that he does provide, I probably wouldn't initially, I'm not saying I wouldn't review them, but they wouldn't be my kind of uh, top of my list. I'd maybe get to them eventually, but by having that, it does help me to kind of like try things, you know, maybe move out of my comfort zone a little bit or give me another reason to kind of review a beer that I probably wouldn't normally go for in the first place. So there's that. So thanks again, Adrian. So we've got basically Vocation Life and Death IPA. Life and Death IPA. It's a 6.5%. It's one of these small baby cans. 330ml. You ever notice that? All the craft beer comes in. 330ml can. Well, I'm not seeing them all, but quite a majority of them. So let's see what it says. 3 kilos of hops and 40 kilos of barley selfishly give their lives to make every barrel of our punchy bestseller. It's a lot to ask, but their new life as this hop forward US style IPA makes their sacrifice worthwhile. There you go, eh? A lot of shit that is. I mean, seriously. I mean, are you going to go, oh, 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 you get all excited? Because I'm reading this thinking, what a load of bollocks. You know, more claptrap in the back. So what does it say? Hoppy tropical citrusy. Oh, there you go. Every box ticks. <laughs> there you go. Everyone's a winner. The most shittiest round of bingo. Have you got hoppy? Yeah, yes. Have you got tropical? Oh, yes. Have you got citrusy? Oh, yes. Oh, it's creamer panties with that one, isn't it? Now, apparently it says... Surrender yourself to fruit-forward flavours with a dash of sharp citrus followed by a lingering bitterness set against a smooth, malty base. So there you go. A brewery is just another factory making a product. It's our people and their passion that make this our vocation. So there you go. So it's, I don't know what it costs, but going by the piss that's on the bloom label, then I'm, I'm sure they're going to charge a pretty penny for it anyway. They'll probably charge at least two, maybe two pound fifty for it. A little can so yeah let's get it cracked open and see if it's hoppy tropical it's interesting seriously for fuck's sake it's a can of beer right let's get wired the pour i should really actually do these in the actual Kind of pint glasses because then it just looks great. So just sitting there, sitting at the bottom of the pint glass, you know, thinking, there you go. There's your money's worth, boys and girls. <laughs> right. Well, just from here, I'm getting wafts of hops. I'm getting hops. Yes, yes. Oh, we're all use hop lovers out there, including Nathan. You can piss your frillies over this one. Oh, well, it's hazy too. It's hazy. Right. Smell. Right, getting grapefruit, slightly burnt orangey. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's like passion fruit as well. It's a little hints of passion fruit, which of course is a natural smell of hops, passion fruit. No, it isn't. So it tells me it's hybrid hops, not natural ones. It's the hybrid versions. This is when they start pissing about with them to try and get different flavour profiles that aren't naturally there in the actual type of hops. So what they do is they hybrid them together to try and get a mix and match to try and bring out certain flavours. 
that are really natural. Maybe that's what they call it, crafty. But anyway, so yeah, grapefruit, passion fruit, maybe slight bread oranges. Not so roundish though. So much. Um, you're not really getting the malt, you're getting more of a kind of passion fruit kind of smell. This is kind of like sweet passion fruit rather than any kind of maltiness and sweetness from that point of view. No grain, no nothing. So it's life and death classic IPA. So let's see what it tastes like. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, it's, it is there. <laughs> Fair play to them. Unfortunately, they, they weren't lying. Yes. Um, and, uh, if you're outside of the UK, and uh, it means it reminds me of a slightly alcohol version of a bongo, basically a bongo with this kind of uh, um, tropical fruit drink that you know, they used to do. And uh, I don't know if they still do it. And I had a very kind of uh, popular adverts with certain music and cartoons and things like this, and it was very popular for with young kids. And it's almost like an alcohol version of that. And the reason why I'm saying it, it's like a fruit juice, because it doesn't really have the bitterness. It has the hoppiness of the passion fruit. It has the hoppiness of the kind of slight grapefruit, but it's very light grapefruit, almost like a blood orange rather than maybe a grapefruit. Bloody seagull now, isn't it? Well, it's actually a gull. I don't know why they call it a seagull, because it's not a seabird. A gull is actually a land bird. So, you know, yeah, we went to sit in the bloody sea and everything else and that type of stuff, but uh, it isn't like, say, a gannet or an albatross. So, yes. Anyway, so yeah, it, uh, what they're talking about, this mentioned something about like a lingering bitterness. I'm not getting any bitterness really at all. For, for an IPA, it's actually lacking in bitterness. But let's break it down. Let's break it right down. Right. Starts off with a bit of multi sweetness, so it does, and uh, you're getting a little bit of passion fruit there. Now it moves on to the mid tongue. You've still got the multi sweetness. The multi sweetness is all the way there until the aftertaste, and uh, that's when the passion fruit. Just as it starts to go into the kind of mid tongue, you're getting a lot more passion fruit. It's starting to build up, but just near the end of the mid tongue, that's where it kind of starts to slightly kind of tail off and you're kind of starting to get more of a I wouldn't say grapefruit because grapefruit you think bitterness and it's not it's more, maybe more like a blood orange or something like that so you're getting a kind of more orangey flavour with maybe a slight bitterness but because you've still got the multi sweetness there it kind of cancels that out so you're not really noticing so much of bitterness you're noticing the kind of citrusness of it but without the bitterness, you're not getting that pithiness that you would probably normally get. Moves on to the kind of aftertaste, and again, it's just this kind of um, kind of blood orange, kind of orange, kind of citrusness, kind of uh, slightly dissipating along with the the smoky sweetness. It just kind of lightens up in the aftertaste, but it's still there, and it just that's what it basically means. It, it, it's like it's like an alcoholic fruit juice, but it doesn't have that bitterness, and that's why it feels almost like a fruit juice, it's kind of cocktail, kind like of fruit cocktail type scenario. So, um, it's actually not bad. It's actually quite refreshing. I mean, there is a slight bitter tone there, but so light, and for an IPA, especially for an IPA with a lot of citrus, it just has doesn't really have any real bitterness at all. Just little light, you know, bitterness tones, but nothing lingering. What they're describing is not what you're getting. But I think that's actually to the betterment of the product. Because you don't I don't really particularly like something that's going to be lingering with bitterness for too long because some of these ones that I've tried 
some of them they're actually quite sickening after a while you're thinking geez God, seriously you, you've taken a potential refreshing drink and you've actually spoiled it by basically making the bitterness and the kind of pithiness overbearing just just too strong at the end and it just spoils it but no if you like tropical flavors if you do like passion fruit if you do like yeah, it's more like a blood orange, a bit more kind of orangey, and you know, more orange kind of citrus, without too much. And it's nicely brewed. You can see that it's a it's a nicely brewed beer, but it is quite hoppy. But it, it's hoppy in I would probably say a good way, and it does have a nice multi sweetness as well, which helps to kind of balance it. So there is a lot of balance. It's it's a yeah, it's a well brewed beer with a nice balance. It just it doesn't have such a strong kind of bitterness taste that you probably get from like seeing more of a kind of an American-esque kind of IPA. It does have the, the citrus flavours, it does have the fruit flavours, it does, and it has the passion fruit flavours, and it is tropical to a certain degree, yes, I would say so. So citrusy, yes. Tropical, yes. Hoppy, I would say yes. Lingering bitterness, no, definitely not. It's, it's quite a light finish. Especially for an IP, which is unusual, which actually makes it quite refreshing. And I suppose, fair play to them. They, I, I don't know whether they did it on purpose or did it by accident or whatever, but it just feels that with the aftertaste bit, they've kind of toned it back a bit, toned it down so it doesn't go kind of like uh, what I've been saying before, that it can become quite sickening and uh, overpowering and just spoils it. This one isn't spoiled. This is nice, well balanced, and yeah, fair play, well, well chosen, Adrian. And uh, yeah, now what would I give this out of ten for an IPA, a kind of American esque IPA? For what they said on the can, apart from the onion bitterness, but they did say it's hoppy, tropical, and citrus, and it is, it's all good. But it's done in a nice balance, and it's got a nice kind of multi sweetness to it. So they haven't, and they didn't even mention that. It says it's got a nice kind of uh, multi base, and they have a nice multi kind of sweet base to it, and fair play to it. Um, that is actually quite nice and quite refreshing. And I would probably say refreshing compared to quite a lot of the kind of American esque IPs. So, yeah, it's got bags of aromas. Bags of flavour, and yeah, I actually quite like this, and I probably would actually buy this, and I think this is quite nice. What would I give it out of 10? I'm actually going to give this a 7. I'm going to, no, 7.5. I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10. It's actually really is quite a nice IP, and uh, I think it'd be a good one if you wanted to kind of try more kind of American style IPs if you've never really tried them or. You've been kind of wary of this kind of citrus. I think this is a good one to try because there's plenty of flavour in there, plenty of hoppy flavour, plenty of citrus, plenty of tropical flavours, things like that. But there's a nice underlying sweetness to it. But it doesn't have that really overbearing, kind of pithy, really soury bitterness that you get with quite a lot of them. So uh, I think this is a good one for people to try if they just want to kind of dabble and just see whether they're going to like these type of peels or not. So it's a seven and a half out of 10. It's a 330 ml can. I don't have a clue what it costs because Adrian bought it, not me. And thanks for that, Adrian. I'm dropping the can now. It's six and a half percent. Seven and a half out of 10. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And another bloody fly. And bye for now.